network routing and IP addressing, IP assigning and addressing methods. So having discussed both IPv4 and IPv6 and the difference between these different types of IP addresses, we now want to talk specifically and in more depth about how IP addresses are assigned to a specific node or client or server. So in this module, we're going to look at the two different ways that IP addresses are assigned. This involves defining the first, static IP addressing, static meaning that the IP address is always the same, and dynamic IP addressing, which means that the IP address can change. We also want to talk about the strengths and weaknesses of each of these addressing methods, and we want to compare the features of one and the other. We're also going to identify when we want to use dynamic IP addressing as opposed to static IP addressing, and define, when we're talking about dynamic IP addressing, the terms DHCP, the server and protocol that are responsible for allowing dynamic IP addressing to work, something called the scope, which lets the DHCP server know which IP addresses are up for grabs, and then the lease, which, just like the lease on an apartment, uh, lets the, both the server and the client know when an uh, IP address can be used and for how long. We also want to talk about when static IP addressing would be preferred, uh, and as you can probably tell from the way this is worded, we generally want to use dynamic IP addressing, as we'll talk about. But there are certain instances in which a static IP addressing is the uh, best method for us, and we'll talk about those as well. So first let's talk about static IP addressing. It's done manually, and that's what this really means. Static means manual assignment, which means that I literally have to go to the computer and type in what the IP address is and how I want to use it. So there are two major flaws with this. First, it can be very time consuming because it has to be done manually and each address has to be entered individually by hand. In addition, this takes a lot of time, and it's prone to a lot of errors. Uh, human error is often a factor when we're configuring addresses for a large amount of systems. And if you can imagine I'm working in a system of, say, uh, 5,000 computers, then I'm going to be typing in IP addresses a lot. Now, while this may be a worthwhile method when assigning a very small amount of addresses, it's obviously not very practical when I'm talking about large quantities. And the other major flaw is that it has to be reconfigured every time the addressing scheme changes. So, for instance, if I was going from IPv4 to IPv6 on my internal network, I'm going to have to rechange everything once I've switched over. Or let's say I want to change my naming system. Maybe I want to go from a class C to a class A IP addressing system if I'm on IPv4. And in this case, I would have to then reconfigure everything on each computer. And you can imagine the amount of time that that's going to take. So due to its many flaws, we're really not going to use this method, uh, static IP addressing, which means, again, manual assignment. The way you can remember that is that static does not change, right? It remains constant. And the word static, meaning not changing, is what tells us that. So we're only going to use that in specific instances, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. So as a result, it's very rarely used except in very specific instances. I'm guessing you've never had to enter the IP address on your Soho router or at your computers at home, and that's because we're going to use this other method, being dynamic addressing. Now, as the name dynamic implies, the IP address can change, which means that it is automatically assigned. Now, this is a lot more useful of the, of the two that we have for many reasons. It's done automatically through a, a protocol called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. So you ever hear DHCP, that is what is referred to when we're talking about dynamic IP addressing. This is part of the TCP IP suite, and it allows a central system to provide IP addresses to client systems. Now, since it's done automatically, there's no possibility of human error, and it's also a lot more efficient than static IP addressing. As a result, it's a lot more common of a method. Uh, 
It also eliminates the need to reconfigure a system if the addressing scheme is changed. So it's far more commonly used because of all these reasons, like we just said. It's more practical and more efficient because I don't have to change every computer. All I have to do is tell the DHCP service computer, we'll talk about that in a second, that we're changing everything and all the underlying computers automatically are gonna change. So if we move over real quickly, into our Windows system, and let's go into our network properties, and we'll go ahead and go to Change Adapter Settings. I'm going to right-click on this and go to Properties. Now, we'll see over here, if I click on TCP IP 4 and go to Properties, it says Obtain an IP Address Automatically. So through DHCP, the IP address is being automatically obtained, just like DNS is also going to be given out automatically. Now, if I wanted to do it statically, I would have to manually assign an IP address, a subnet mask, and a default gateway for each device. So you can see where we're not going to want to do that. So let's talk a little bit more about DHCP, or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is the protocol which assigns IP addresses, and it does this first by assigning what's called, or defining rather, what's called the scope. The scope are the ranges of all of the available IP address on the system that's running the DHCP service. And what this does is it takes one of the IP addresses from this scope and assigns it to a computer or a client. So for instance, let's say that we're dealing for simplicity's sake, with a uh, 192.168 class C network. So the scope might be something like 192.168.1.10 through 254. This means that of the IP addresses it's going to assign, it's not going to take anything in front of the 10. So this gives us dot one through dot nine to use for static IP addressing. So what this ensures is that the DHCP server is not going to assign an IP address that we have already manually or statically assigned to another device. We'll talk about why we would want to do that in a minute. But this ensures, again, that the scope uh, that the DHCP is not going to assign an IP address outside of its scope. Then what it does, is it takes this available address and assigns it to the client for a set amount of time. And this is called a lease. So the lease says how long the IP address is going to last. Now, the reason that we had leases is because, remember, if I turn off my computer, it no longer needs an IP address. It also means that, let's say I'm taking a computer away, uh, I don't, if I have, a, uh, if it has a lease of forever, then that computer now has one of my available IP addresses. So sometimes we'll have an IP address with a 24-hour lease, or maybe a two-day lease, but whatever that lease is, at the end of that lease, it's going to have to re again ask for another IP address. This is also the way that we can share a limited number of IP addresses with a lot of uh, computers or nodes. So when we had the internet we used to dial up to the to our ISP or internet service provider what this would allow is it allowed our uh, ISP to provide us with one IP address that only lasted for a certain amount of time and then when we disconnected the IP address or disconnected from the server and therefore didn't need the IP address it could assign it to someone else and it didn't have to worry about us coming back on and wanting to use the same IP address because remember one of the rules is you cannot 
have two devices with one IP address. All right? Now, let's talk about how this works from the client's point of view. Basically what happens is I have a DHCP server here, and it has what's called a trusted connection to the switch. We we'll defined what a switch is previously, and we'll talk a bit more about them later as well. But it has a trusted connection. This computer, say, comes online and says, Hi, can I join your network? Can I get an IP address? It sends its request through what's called an untrusted connection to wherever the DHCP server is. Now, the DHCP server at some point finds this because this is generally a broadcast because, again, it's not a unicast, it's a broadcast because this computer coming on doesn't know where the DHCP server is. So it sends a broadcast message out. The DHCP server then responds and offers a lease on an IP address, at which point this untrusted or unassigned connection becomes a trusted one. Now, when the lease goes out, it's again untrusted, and so it needs to repeat the entire process again. Now, so far, we've been uh, pretty fair to DHCP and expanded on the benefits for dynamic addressing. But there are some exceptions when a network is configured uh, for DHCP, and we don't want every single device to be automatically assigned an IP address. For instance, um, the DHCP server itself needs to have a static IP address. This is because we don't want the DHCP server to be changing addresses. And what's going to happen is if we have a lease, theoretically the DHCP server could change its IP address. And since every computer on the network needs to know where to go, that's going to have to remain the same. This is going to go the same with the domain name server, so the DNS server, which allows us to convert between, say, google.com and the IP address. So we don't want to have to find this every single time, and we have to set it as something specific, meaning static. We're also going to put our web server as some static IP address. This is the reason why if you wanted to uh, get a, an account with your ISP or internet service provider, and you wanted to run a web server from your computer at home, you would need to ask for a static IP address because that's the only way that someone can link through DNS to your web server. And so our web servers always has to be static because when I type in google.com, I always want it to go to one of a few different IP addresses. Finally, printers are something else that we want to have be static because the printer we don't want to move around and we want to be able to lock it in when we install it on the computer. Uh, same with any servers, also routers, the gateway computer or the gateway device that allows us to get out to the network, we need that to remain the same. So that's why when we define the scope, and in previous example we defined it as any IP address between 10 and 254, we don't want it to change because we want these nine IP addresses to be ones that we can assign. Now, sometimes we're going to make this a little larger, uh, so that way we can assign uh, a lot more static IP addresses. So also maybe a we uh, wireless access point we might want to be static, et cetera, et cetera. And all of this, again, is done uh, through a web interface or through um, uh, some sort of um, router, device or through a terminal or something. So it, this is not something we're physically hardwiring onto the device because again, that's, that's a MAC address, a physical address. But this is something that we want to uh, set through a software of some sort. All right, so just to recap what we talked about, we defined static IP addressing. Again, static means that the IP address does not change. It also means that it had to have been manually assigned, okay? Now, we also talked about dynamic IP addressing, which DHCP allows us to do, and this means that the IP address can change because it is automatically assigned. One thing I didn't specifically talk about what we referenced in previous modules, too, is that a PIPA address, 
that automatically assigned IP address, which if the dynamic IP address system is not working, so the DHCP server, for instance, is down, and it can't get an IP address from the DHCP server, it's going to assign itself its own IP address. You remember that was 169.254.x.x. So if you see this is your IP address, then guess what? Your DHCP server is down. We also identify the strengths and weaknesses of each of these. So um, we define the static, we define dynamic, and then we identify the strengths and weaknesses of each. Remember, the strength of dynamic is that it's easy and it requires less work if we change anything. Of course, the dynamics or, or the, the downside of it could be this APIPA, or we don't want um, the IP address to change. We also talked about when to use dynamic IP addressing, which is in most cases. We define DHCP, which allows dynamic IP addressing to work. Scope, which is basically the range of IP addresses. And the lease, which is how long the IP address is going to be sent out for. And then we recognize when static IP addressing is preferred. For instance, when we're dealing with printers or routers or even the DHCP server itself, which we cannot have change.